Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. After months of uncertainty, Michigan's highest court ruling tonight that the voters will decide the issue of abortion in Michigan. Thanks for staying up with us. The ruling breaks the tie by the board of canvassers. They were deadlocked last week, although along party lines. Now, if voters pass the proposal in November, it would make it a constitutional right for women to get an abortion in Michigan. Jason Colthorpe is getting reaction to the ruling tonight and what it means for the overall election, Jason. Yeah, let's Kim, let's first start with reaction, which was swift and passionate. Attorney General Dana Nessel saying this an overwhelming number of Michiganders signed petitions to bring these questions before the voters of our state and their voices should not be extinguished by two unelected partisan board members. The Michigan Republican Party calling it a dereliction of the court's duty. The rulings now allow for the possibility of error ridden documents to be enshrined into our state constitution. Michigan doctors hoping this will pass quote so that we can continue to help our patients make the deeply personal and private decisions around pregnancy and abortion without politicians deciding for them. And this tweet from Republican gubernatorial candidate Tudor Dixon. And just like that, you can vote for Gretchen Whitmer's abortion agenda and still vote against her. Gretchen, time to stop hiding behind your BS ads. Should abortion be legal? We've never had that debate here in Michigan. And now we will. Local 4 pollster Richard Zuba's data shows this proposal has a good chance of passing. This polls very strongly by two to one margins uh, that voters do want to put in a constitutional right to abortion. Those voters being likely Democrats and some political insiders say that means Republicans now have to go on the offensive. Much will depend on how strongly the Republicans, and particularly Tudor Dixon running for governor, can make the case that in fact this ballot proposal in November is extreme. Now, this should all become official tomorrow when the State Board of Canvassers meets again to certify those signatures and put this on the ballot as per the court's wishes. And we will be following. Kimberly? Yeah, we will. All right, Jason, we appreciate it. Now, the state Supreme Court also ruling tonight a ballot proposal to expand voting rights and voting access in the state will also be on the November ballot. State Board of Canvassers deadlocked on that decision last week, too. The proposal would require nine days of early in-person voting and continue to allow registered voters to cast ballots without an ID as long as they sign an affidavit. That decision was also made in a vote of five to two by the high court. We'll see how it does on the November ballot. Tributes are pouring in for Queen Elizabeth II, Britain's longest serving monarch and a global icon. President Biden tonight honoring Her Majesty, who met with more than a dozen U.S. presidents throughout her historic reign. Alice Barr with the latest from Washington. Tonight, the world is mourning Britain's longest serving monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, whose 70 years on the throne defined an era and embodied steady leadership. President Biden visiting the British Embassy tonight and expressing the condolences of a nation. The thoughts and prayers of the American people are with the people of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth in their grief. President Biden was the last of 14 U.S. presidents to meet with Queen Elizabeth. Tributes poured in today from former presidents Carter, Clinton, George W. Bush, Obama and Trump, all honoring her legacy and dignified public persona while noting private moments of warmth, humor and charm. From booming bells at the National Cathedral to a moment of silence at the bustling New York Stock Exchange and lowered flags throughout Washington. American institutions and everyday Americans honoring a global icon. I loved her, I have huge respect for who she is, and um, just sad. From the people of the UK, an outpouring of grief and appreciation for a steadfast presence in their lives. The Queen's family gathering at Balmoral Castle, the Scottish estate where she died. Her son Charles now becoming King Charles III, as the world says goodbye to a queen who led her country through generations of war and peace and left an indelible legacy. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News.
together. Okay, Allison, tomorrow morning we expect King Charles to address the United Kingdom for the first time since the Queen's death. We'll bring you his comments right here on Local 4, plus a look at what's next for the King until his coronation. That's tomorrow on Local 4 News at 6 a.m. Back here this week's city council meeting in East Point abruptly ends after just 17 minutes. It was the city's mayor at the center of all the drama. You are out, you are out of line. You are out of line. You're out of Point line. of order. You're out, out of line. Point of order. You are out of line. You are out of line. Now, do you want to send It was at that moment four council members made the decision to leave the meeting chambers. Megan Woods live tonight in East Point. There's a lot to sort through here, though, including allegations from the mayor against one of the council members, Megan, from months ago. That's right, Devin. This all stems from an alleged assault that happened back in June um, at cruising Grashit between the mayor and Councilman Curley. And the mayor requested a PPO that's still going through the court system, but it's what led to the moments that you're about to see. Hectic, unorganized, out of hand. That's the mayor and two city council members describing Tuesday's meeting. It started with this first public comment. I'm here in support of Councilman Curley. Then the mayor interrupts. Okay, you know what, I'm gonna stop you right there. Council member Harvey Curley said it came as a shock. It's one thing for council people in the mayor to argue or disagree with something, but it's a, it's a thing again when you start downgrading our citizens. But Mayor Monique Owen said she was trying to bring order to the meeting. She says the first speaker was with others before the meeting with signs outside supporting Councilman Curley. Knowing how that person has conducted themselves several times in meetings and outside of meetings, I want to just make sure before she continued to talk, which I let her speak, that this is how the rest of the meeting should go. The city attorney was asked to clarify what's allowed at public comment. If it's going to get into an issue of uh, uh, racial accusations, something along those lines, then the mayor has certainly has the right to, as the controller of the meeting, to shut that down. That community member was able to continue. Then other people came up to speak, and that's when things escalated. Enough is enough. This you is a personal angry. matter. It's not about criticizing. You can criticize my policy. Stop you stop it. it. I don't think that was the place to re-victimize me, to use that as a place of mockery, and I won't let them do that to anyone. But council members say that's not the point. That's why they all walked out. The only way we could end the meeting is by not having a quorum and leaving. The next city council meeting is in two weeks and everyone we spoke to hope it's not a repeat of Tuesday night's meeting. Now that PPO request is still going through the court system, like I said earlier, but a judge is expected to make a decision in the next few weeks. Live in East Point, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Some kind of night. All right, Megan. The strike at Eastern Michigan University continues today and it looks like it'll end up in court. In court filings, both sides are battling over whether the strike is legal. The union representing 500 faculty members voted to strike Tuesday night. Neither side can come to an agreement on a new contract. Classes, though, are continuing, though many have been canceled because professors are on the picket line. We'll keep you posted on the negotiations. An investigation into the deadly shooting of a pizza delivery driver now includes two other robberies. Patrick Higgins was shot and killed while delivering a pizza to a vacant home on Lenore Avenue on Detroit's west side. Two other delivery drivers have also come forward saying they too were called to that home and then robbed at gunpoint. When they arrived, that driver was approached by two suspects and those suspects produced a firearm and demanded the victim's money and other property. Police have since boarded up the home and are asking delivery drivers to only go to well-lit areas. Well, it was a big night in Southfield with the city holding its second annual police department award ceremony. The event honors those officers who went above and beyond, oftentimes saving lives while on duty. The event was held tonight at the Regency Manor Banquet Center with officers and their families all in attendance. It's very important to recognize the men and women of the Southfield Police Department for their heroism, their bravery, their commitment to service. And due to the pandemic, it's the first Southfield Police Awards ceremony since 2019.